Good morning and welcome to Learn for Life News on Friday, the 9th of November 2012. The theme for this morning is program or be programmed. We're looking at a very packed program today, so I'll hurry on. Uh, the first part of the program is devoted to looking at educational senior management teams who have taken over the educational agenda using social media. Then the second item is all about code clubs. Who are the organisations that can help you? Where do you go? What do you find out? How can you join those communities? Thirdly, we've got the results from Teach Meet iPad last night. They have a live stream or what was a live stream recorded and archived on the web, plus a very interesting thought piece from Terry Friedman and his blog. Then we'll be looking at Bad Education, the book that has just come out, and UK Ed Chat, what is it? How can you join in? How can you get involved in those communities? And lastly, Ofsted, a block to creativity. Who would have thought it? The programme goes out on video, through YouTube, audio, through Audio Boo, and text, through Liquor Eyes. It is also archived to archive.org. So you can find it easily and quickly. Each URL or web address mentioned in the program has a bit.ly address, which is a shortened version of a URL, a web address that makes it memorable for you. OK, on with the show. And the first bit.ly address is bit.ly.com forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams forward slash eight. And this is about the grassroots educational management using social media. The first site is Heads Round Table. That's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Heads Round Table. And the Heads Round Table, or the Head Teachers Round Table, is a very interesting group that met at the Guardian offices a few weeks back and decided they wanted to take back the educational agenda. So they set up at Heads Round Table on Twitter and a WordPress site and went for a six-point plan. And since then, they've had 4,000, close to 4,000 followers on Twitter, which has been phenomenal in just one to two weeks. Their six-point plan is quite reasonable. It's schools should be assessed in a range of ways, not just through uh, examinations. So a wider remit there in terms of assessment. Ofsted should be replaced by a local partnership that will hold schools to account and help them to improve. So not just a formative flying picket type, fly in and tell people what they've done in a summative way, but a formative, proper, professional uh, partnership with local communities and experts who can actually come in and mentor and change. I presume that's the agenda there. Number three, the curriculum assessment should be taken out of political control and given to an independent agency for over 20 years. That's a bit contentious. A lot of people have been talking about that. Four, the government should encourage small families of schools rather than big chains. I think that's a very good idea because it actually takes things out of the big corporate world and puts it again once more into the local communities, which can then be managed and those expertises could be built locally through local services that people build on as the schools evolve. Very interesting point there. Number five, this is the most contentious. Norm referencing in exam grading is not fair, i.e. capping the number of students who can achieve a certain grade. That is a very contentious point and there's been a lot of argument on the Heads Round Table about that on the actual website itself and elsewhere with people blogging add their responses to that. Number six, school accountability measures should encourage collaboration between schools and explicitly develop systems leadership. Rather than have all this massive rush to uh, be on your marks, so to speak, why not build a proper infrastructure where people can actually develop expertise together in collaboration? That sounds an excellent, excellent idea. Okay, Second site is Teacher Toolkit, and Teacher Toolkit at Teacher Toolkit is Ross Morrison McGill, who is an assistant head teacher, hoping to be a deputy head teacher and obviously head teacher. It is bit.ly bit dot ly forward slash Teacher Toolkit Teach Meet, and this is a very interesting site because Ross actually has set up SLT Chat. 
Now, if you don't know what a, an SLT or an Ed Chat is, it's a place where people can go online and talk for a specific period, a specific window on Twitter or through uh, chat forums about a specific topic each week. And then that is archived and put up online. The SLT chat is usually on a Sunday and it's archived using a particular piece of software called Storyfy, which then captures all the tweets, all the tweets that people have made and puts it into an archive. Um, what's happened now is that Ross is putting out SLT Teach Meet. And now that is a really interesting idea. It's senior management teach meets at their level. And in that way, they hope to be a bit more transformational in the educational space, a bit more proactive, a bit more positive in the way that they garner information between members and how to change the education agenda, their schools and the educational space in a proper professional way. Uh, their views, they're non-political, they believe that digital and public sharing of good practice is key to outstanding CPD. They're striving to improve themselves for the benefit of their pupils and staff. Uh, SL TeachMeet will provide a platform to share success and an approach to leadership through innovation, strong reflective leadership, and communicating this effectively through learning and collaboration. Learning and collaboration, again, that's another one that comes up from the uh, head teachers around the table. Their aims are to provide high-class free and, where possible, regional learning events for senior leadership team members. Uh, now, the interesting thing about senior members or senior teachers is that they have a strategic view. It's not just school-based like teach meets. Um, they want CPD that's relevant, engaging and free from political rhetoric. Don't we all? Don't we really want to get rid of that rhetoric, push it out, get proper, proper, incisive clear ways forward. They aim to support networks of change, of mutual support, again mutual support, collaboration, innovative working practices for the greater good of our schools, all very noble causes, to make attending an SL teach meet a valid and beneficial form of recognised CPD. So we're talking here about people who organise them, put them together and manage them should get some recognition. SL teach meet will evolve continuously and adapt to meet the needs of all attendees. Put value into the teacher's professionalism, creating an atmosphere where it's okay to fail, share and encourage reflective practice, giving them time and space to innovate. So how are they going to do this? Organise teach meets at high profile conferences and venues only. Rotate teach meets across the regions through the academic year. Curate teach meet style talks. Coordinate with ethical sponsors. And they are going to disseminate all this with audiovisual and digital media where possible. A very noble and sensible cause. And where can you see all this? Well, I would go along to bit.ly forward slash teach toolkit teach meet. Go to both those sites and see how senior management are getting online and using social media to affect change. Right, in section two today, because we've got a very crammed program, is code clubs. Now, this is looking at uh, how code clubs can be set up to teach computer science in tandem with computer specialists. You can actually bring them in. Uh, we'll tell you the process of how to do this and how this has evolved over the time. We've got seven distinct organisations. There are a lot more, but these seven seem to be panning out to be the main players in this space. They're coming from outside education mainly, but also their groups within education who started to evolve a proper professional development structure like we've been talking about before. People have thought about this and started to seed at local hub level ways forward. I think the government will finally have to give in to this because this way of moving forwards is people locally taking their own agendas in their own hands. And despite what's happening with government pushing down as a central directive, local initiatives are springing up all over the place like mushrooms. Okay, this is bit.ly.com forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams forward slash seven. We're going to look at seven distinct organizations and I'm going to go through them now. Uh, the first is Code Club. Code Club is a very distinct organization. It's bit.ly forward slash code clubs because uh, Code Club is a different bit.ly. And basically, you can look at volunteers or schools, getting schools uh, to accept volunteers. They ask people to come in as a uh, volunteer who knows something about coding and get involved with the primary school. Come in and volunteer to run your code club. 
it acts as a sort of clearinghouse for professionals to come in and do this at uh, Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3. It encourages you to join STEMnet, which you should know about, where you can go and get training to become a STEMnet ambassador, which will then enable you to get uh, a, a CPD, CRB, pardon me, a CRB, a Criminal Records Bureau check to show that you're clear of any criminal activity so you can work within the school. And that in turn allows you to start up a code club within the school in tandem with someone who'd like to do that with uh, the school. Now, usually the initiative is coming from you into the school and in tandem with the school. So code clubs are really worth getting involved with. Code Dojo. It's quite similar. It's codadojo.com, but it's also uh, codadojos in the Bitly address system. And this is another um, startup that's coming into schools and they're in Dublin to Tokyo or San Francisco. They're asking people to provide free and open learning to young people, especially in programming technology. Again, it's getting people involved, getting people into schools. The next site is something that was set up as a part of the computing at schools initiative and i don't know if it's that current now but it, it seems to be still up there it's called computing plus plus and uh, that's computing plus plus and that is um computing profs under the bitly system and basically again it's getting coders and schools to come together this is more to do with it professionals who are parents or it professionals who are concerned again they've got a map they've got a mentoring scheme and they want people to come into schools and work maybe more at key stage uh, three four helping people with projects or starting up computer science initiatives within the school again another really interesting site to get involved with and then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got Sue Black's Go To Foundation, which has already sort of had a, a, a day in a primary school working through using uh, things like the Raspberry Pi and other programming activities, pulling again a number of people from different disciplines into schools, a bit like uh, Alan O'Donoghue's Hack Days, which I'm not mentioning in this episode because I've mentioned it so much in the last one. Um, again, the Go To Tech site is bit.ly and then that is go to foundation have a look at that very interesting i've got an interview from that to put up um as, as i have here with um computer science for fun um, this is an interesting organization again linked kind of to computing at schools has separate funding it tries to use things like magic to show people how algorithms work. It's more of a key stage three, four. Um, it talks about uh, different uh, themed projects that you can sort of find a way into uh, in terms of computer science. I have actually done a number of videos of them showing the way they use card tricks and everything to show algorithms and I must put them up at some point. And that is uh, bit.ly forward slash comps for fun. It's also Mozilla. Obviously, it is the Mozilla Festival down at the South Bank today on the 9th, 10th and 11th. And this particular site is their webmaker site. And it talks about three particular applications, Thimble, X-Ray Goggles and Popcorn Maker. And you can go along and have a look at that. It's more to do with web technologies and uh, digital culture and the spread of web technologies and influences outside of school. So you can actually do this stuff at home uh, at your kitchen table with a group of friends. And that is bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash Moz Tools. Now, having looked at all that, there are two particular specific teacher sites uh, in Wales that I want to point people to this morning because they are actually uh, partnerships between Computing at Schools, which is an organisation that has sprung up, again, like the Head Teachers Roundtable or SLT uh, sites, and they have become more or less um, the official sites for computer science now. This one is the Welsh Teachers and Code Academy site, and you can see they've spent a little bit of time working with Code Academy, who I haven't talked about yet. And that is 
bit.ly forward slash Welsh Code Academy, and they've been working with Code Academy. Now, Code Academy is quite an interesting uh, organization. It deals with after school programming yet again, where you can start a couple your school, and it's an online web based service as well. So you can sit down and learn to program using Python on the web. The particular interest here is that they've got together with the Welsh teachers from Computing at School. And there is another site, also come out at the same time, bit.ly forward slash six Welsh hubs, six Welsh hubs, that looks at the different localised hubs of computing professionals, computing science teachers, uh, the South East Wales Hub, the South West Wales Hub, the Mid Wales Hub, North East Wales Club, North West Wales Club and the Powys Hub. And this is where Wales is really getting its act together. And you should look at this exemplar of how people are doing things at a localised level, pulling together meetings, a bit like Teach Meet, to show people exemplars of working in the classroom, building an infrastructure, a proper localised CPD infrastructure. This is how it should be done. This is the way forwards for CPD and the way people are organising themselves in this country. Get along and see that section now. OK, that section, I will remind you again, is bit.ly.com forward slash bundles forward slash iBeams forward slash seven. Go and have a look how it's being done in practice. Right, we really do have to crack on now because we're getting quite extended in this edition, but it's good because it's enrichment of your day and your uh, contacts and resources. Section three is Teach Meet iPad. It's the place to go to see what happened at Teach Meet iPad last night. It was the stream from that particular event and it's up online now and you can go there by going to bit.ly forward slash teach meet iPad recording unusually and you can see all the ways people have talked about using iPads now at some point in the evening someone said oh I've got all 150 apps I've been using with my class up and I've differentiated them according to the curriculum. And I began to think, oh, right, OK, that's a bit much. Are we just running to keep up with the technology? Are we in control of it or is it in control of us? Program or be programmed is the theme of today's broadcast. So I'd like to draw your attention to um, Terry Friedman's blog which is really, really good. And it is, uh, if I can pull it up here very quickly, iPads, tablets and learning. And he's talking about that entire thing to do with um, practice, to do with iPads. And the bit.ly for that is bit.ly forward slash tech for what? Uh, Terry's blog is always thoughtful, very interesting. He talks about the... Um, different ways we could have to think about uh, using our technology, how we can get on with it. And he talks about um, the event at the Royal Society the other day, which we referenced uh, a, a couple of days ago. And he talks about Richard Noss and Richard Noss's quote. Uh, he said, are iPads good for the learning is the wrong question to ask. A much better question is, what kinds of learning do our inventions like iPads support? And read the rest of the article. It is fascinating. It makes you reflect on, are we in control of the technology or is the control technology controlling us? And if you think back to the uh, other elements we've had this morning about senior management and about involving specialists and about programming, reflective practice, thinking about learning, learning that involves exploring curiosity, what are we using the technology for and why? Go and look at that. OK, the next section is the Bad Education book, which Dylan Williams or Dillian William on Twitter suggested people go and look up. It's uh, bit.ly forward slash bad education. It's a 20 quid book, which is a bit steep for a, for a, a paperback. It'd be nicer if it was on Kindle as well. This is trying to do what bad science and Ben Goldacre does for science with education. It's looking at the different um, sacred cows of education, if you want, and how we need to look at them in terms of data and all the evidence that's out there. Not in terms of rhetoric, 
not in terms of skewing the data, as Michael Gove has been known to do with the PISA results, as we pointed out the other day, but actually what is happening. And of course, Dylan is one of the advisors, or was one of the advisors to Michael Gove. He writes the first chapter of this book. Go along and have a look, bit.ly forward slash bad education. Okay, the penultimate section in this broadcast is UK Ed Chat. What is it? We've already discussed about UK Ed Chats. Basically, they are talks within a specific time frame online, sometimes on Twitter, sometimes on forums, and they last for usually an hour or half an hour. And all the discussion that's been typed up into the browser and the interactions between people are archived online. And if you go along to bit.ly forward slash UK Ed Chat 123, that was the chat that was last night on the 8th of November 2012, you will find all the stuff that they put up there and the different uh, interactions between people. So it's archived and saved so you can see all the things for later. So the session one, two, three is how can we support teachers who struggle to engage with new technologies? And if you go along to our, the archive session, you'll see everything timed and all the chats in there. Uh, the second part is the UK Ed chat Scoop It. Scoop It is a, uh, an online archival system and it actually takes uh, and puts together archives that people have put into the web pages and you can see the resources that people have put in there. So someone has kindly gone to the UK Ed chat and taken a lot of the resources mentioned in there and put them on Scoop It so you can actually browse through those resources and see if they are useful to you. So that's quite interesting because you now have an archive of the chat so it's no longer something that's there and gone. It's actually captured and referenced and the resources put up. Another very specific focus for the education ed community. All right. Now, the last bitly today um, about our glorious leader, tangentially, it's uh, about Ofsted, who is the uh, tail that wags the dog of education, as uh, is pointed out in this particular article. And this is bitly stop Ofsted, um, a nice clear thing. And this is uh, an edexec article, an advisor warns of Ofsted's impact. Um, interesting that uh, there is a, a typo in the actual <laughs> headline there. Maybe they should change that, putting my teacher's eyes on. The culture of education introduced by Ofsted's requirements is forcing teachers into delivering very robotic lessons, according to a government advisor. Um, are you delivering robotic lessons in front of Ofsted inspectors? Well, maybe because um, peer reformed peer-led inspections with an equal appreciation of academic rigor and educational breadth go a long way to solving these issues. What are the issues? Right, well, um, John McIntosh, a key figure in the government's ongoing review of the curriculum, warned that many head teachers are obsessed with league tables. Pupils' education is suffering as a result. Not those head teachers who've started to organise themselves, I've noticed. His comments follow the introduction of a new inspection regime by Ofsted targeting clamp coasting schools and focusing on areas such as pupil achievement, teaching standards and behaviour. Macintosh, former head of the London Oratory School, warned that the new regime may be damaging the education system. Um, there is a phrase that involves the word Sherlock in it that I will not repeat on air. Responding to his comments, Russell Hobby, General Secretary of the National Association of Head Teachers, said... It's not the idea of inspection that is wrong, it's the obsession with crude exam statistics blended with the ferociously high stakes attached to the judgments. The narrow school's attention and this narrow school's attention and punishes young risk taking, sucking out the innovation and creativity which should drive improvement. Ofsted needs to ask itself, why is this an obstacle that school leaders might overcome in order to do what they believe is right? Well, I would suggest that some of the initiatives this morning in Program or Be Programmed, the initiative of grassroots senior management getting together and taking back the agenda, the initiative of uh, SLT teach meets where people meet up and share expertise and the issue of UK Ed Chat where people get together online and share their expertise are ad hoc 
ways forward. You can actually change the agenda by taking control yourself. And I'll leave you to get on with your day. It's Friday. And think those positive thoughts of how you're going to take back the agenda this morning in your classroom, in your school. Thank you very much. And have a lovely weekend.